Okay, so we got the fretboard all masked off here, and uh, like I said, making sure that the ends are not stuck down to the uh, sides of the neck and whatnot. And the next step is going to be using a sharpie here. We're just going to go and we're going to darken the tops of all of these frets. And what this is going to do is as we use our leveling tool, it's going to ensure it's going to uh, show us where our high spots are. You know, we'll uh, do a couple passes with the tool, and we'll uh, check out and see where wherever the sharpie is missing, and uh, it will tell us that those are our highest spots. And we'll have to keep sanding until we get all the sharpie off the tops of all of the frets. Okay, so there's uh, two different tools we can use for this. Um, the first one is. A radius sanding beam and you can see there that there's a radius on here this is a 16 inch radius one which matches our um, our fretboard if you are going to use it just make sure you get as long of, uh, of a beam as possible um, that's very very important when you're doing fret leveling um, use as long as the tool as possible you want to try and be able to cover all the frets at once with the tool um, but anyways we're not going to be using this what we are going to be using is this sanding beam here and this is just a simple one inch by I think probably two maybe two and a quarter inches and uh, it's pre precision ground flat um, on both the edges here um, and I've just attached some 120 sandpaper cut into one inch strips or whatever um, just stuck on here and this thing is great because um, a couple reasons you can use this to go in the direction um, of the string travel so it's going to the frets are going to be level with one another um, right across where the actual string is and not just um, you know perpendicular to the to the center point of the neck so um, you, you tend to get a much better level job out of that um, you can really dial the action down and including using the, the jig here um, you can really get some really nice action uh, by utilizing both of these methods together. Um, so what I'm going to do is, and also this thing uh, weighs probably over four times as much as that other beam. The other beam is aluminum and this one is um, it's steel. It's like it's heavy, uh, which is good because then it means you don't have to put any downward pressure on it. Um, you can just work it back and forth and let it do its work. Um, and that's great because um, if you, you know, if, if you tend to try to put downward pressure on the tool at this stage, you might move the neck out of position or you might um, kind of bow it in an area or whatever that you're working on and you know, then it's not straight anymore so you're leveling an unstraight neck. So this way you just kind of glide it across the top and let the weight of the tool itself do now the some work. Some people um, like to say, well, it's, it's better to go only one way doing this. Um, I've heard other people who say, you know, exactly the opposite. I myself, I always go back and forth. Um, you just got to keep in mind the, the direction or the uh, where the strings will be traveling, and try and keep the um, try and keep the beam oriented to that to that um, path type of deal. Okay, so now we're starting at the center here, and we're just going to go. Like I said, back and forth, back and forth. Try and keep it as straight as possible. And now we're going to start just kind of working it back and forth here. And because this thing is so heavy, I mean, it's pretty aggressive. It works pretty quickly taking down material. Okay, we're just going to have a look here and see what we're at. And as you can see, um, most of the sharpie is gone. We've got a little bit here on the second and third frets, uh, even less on the first fret. And uh, we've got um, some areas down here. So uh, I'm just going to finish up here. Uh, there shouldn't be a whole lot. It, it, you know that basically that if you're getting some off of the uh, first fret and some off of you know the fourth fret, then these second and third ones aren't that far behind. So I'm going to go ahead, probably about another two or three minutes worth of sanding, get that nice and flat. And then Okay, so now that we've got all these uh, frets leveled out, uh, what you'll find is you'll see that you've got um, 
flat tops on top of your frets. We can't have that. Um, we, what we want is we want to get uh, back to that crown kind of profile, uh, that rounded profile that we have usually on these frets. Uh, reason being is because whenever you fret on uh, the uh, on a specific fret, the smaller contact point you have, the better. Um, it, the note will just intonate better that way. So now what we've done is we've went ahead and we've marked the tops of all of our frets again. And the um, reason why we did this is because um, the file that we're going to be using for this, uh, this is a diamond fret file and you can see it's got um, kind of a rounded profile there. It doesn't exactly match um, the width of the fret. What we need to do is we need to kind of work it um, kind of on the side kind of profile and then switch and do the same on the other side and uh, just kind of work our way and what we're what we're trying to do is we're trying to remove most of the black uh, sharpie on top of these frets but we want to leave just a tiny little thin line uh, right down the center uh, why you want this is the reason why you're marking the top here you want to make sure that you don't take anything off of the uh, center part of the fret you want to make sure that that remains untouched because we just got done leveling all these out to that exact um, you know, level. So we want to make sure that we maintain that while we're rounding these over. So just leaving a little thin line of Sharpie on each one of these uh, will ensure that we do that. Okay, so we have um, our fret file here. There's a couple different kinds of these too. Uh, there's another type that just looks like a normal flat file. Uh, with a handle on it. I tend to like these better just because they have um, the angle here so you know uh, as you're working with it it keeps you especially when you get down towards the body it keeps you away from the instrument while you're working on the frets um, and not just that this is um, this is uh, the diamond encrusted one so it's they uh, take down material a lot faster than the normal files and they um, and they leave a nicer cut too. The files tend to leave like um, kind of ridge marks um, in the frets uh, afterwards and it takes a little bit of work to clean that up. Uh, these leave a, a lot cleaner of a um, finish on the fret by the time you get it crowned. Okay so uh, we're gonna start with this fret here and you can see uh, we've got a pretty wide um, area of Sharpie on the top here and we're just gonna start um, on the left side here and have have the file kind of tilted to the left or whatever side or to whatever side you're working on and we just want to go back and forth here stopping every now and then to check your progress okay and, and you'll start to see the line start to thin out and that's what we're looking for now before you go too far on either side um, switch and uh, do a little bit on the other side too. Um, the idea is um, the Sharpie that you're leaving on here, you want it to be left on the center of the fret um, to ensure that the note at that fret intonates properly. Okay, looking pretty good. The, the line is a little bit thinner in this area here than it is around these areas, so now I gotta concentrate more on these areas. And I wanna try and get the entire line uh, about as thin as that is there, so just keep working away, check your progress, switch to the other side. flat on top uh, that required a lot of leveling then it's going to take a little while to um, to get the shoulder back on it as well so you know just take your time but the main thing we're trying to concentrate on here is not is uh, trying to keep some of the sharpie on the center point of the fret this one's getting close to done here I take a little bit more material off there Okay, so we got a nice thin line now going down here, and it's pretty consistent uh, from one side to the other. Now, next thing that we want to do is uh, where we have the bevels on these frets, if you feel there, you'll feel like there's going to be a little bit of a burr there just from uh, the filing that we just did. So we're, what we're going to do is we're just going to take our file, and we're just going to kind of angle it, 
just a couple of swipes to remove that burr. We're going to do the same over here. That's pretty good. Okay, so that's what we're looking at there. We just have a tiny little line down the center. And um, any Sharpie that's left on here, um, eventually it will disappear as we get into uh, getting into the higher grits. When we get into the higher grits, you know, past probably 600 and up, uh, we can actually start working a little bit on the top of these frets um, just to get the scratches out of them that the, uh, that the leveling paper left. So, and that's pretty much it. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, go down the fretboard, uh, do the rest of these frets, get them looking like this, and then we can move on to uh, sanding them and uh, starting to get these things to, to shine like a jewel.